Hey guys, my name is Anthony, and uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about a, an option, an option that you can use to try to heal your anal fissure. Yeah, this is a fun topic. I think we can all agree. Um, so uh, I'd be I'm over the embarrassment of this topic because I went through it for six, seven, no, eight months now. Okay. Um, so here's the story. Uh, just briefly go tell you what I went through. Maybe it's something that you're going through. I had a, had an anal fissure uh, happen to me. Very fun. Uh, happens to uh, I think like six percent of the population at one point or another in their lives. So it's, that's pretty big considering a lot of people on the planet. Um, there could be uh, mild anal fissures and chronic anal fissures. Okay, I had a chronic anal fissure. Very fun. I had tears externally and internally. So. Um, that goes, it goes without saying that uh, that's very, very painful. It's definitely not something that uh, you ever want to experience in your life. Um, it's chronic, persistent pain for months, okay? It doesn't go away. It takes up 60 to 70% of your mental real estate. So if you're trying to do something like go to work interact with your kids or your spouse or your friends it you can't you're just constantly in pain and i talked about it a lot every other sentence was my god i'm in so much pain right now and it, it was just like not only is it grating on you it's great on everyone around you and there's only so many times people around you could say like hey i'm sorry <laughs> you know so um anyway um, if you want to know what an anal fissure is, go on Wikipedia. Uh, you can see diagrams if you search on Google. That's fun. Um, and so here's my here's my story. Here's my experience, and I'm going to offer a solution. So I'll be very quick. After three months of listening to doctors and trying twelve different ointments, some over the counter, some prescription, as well as muscle relaxer pills, nothing worked. I was in the same amount of pain the first day I had this damn thing to three months of listening to doctors, okay? I am not a doctor. You take this advice, do with it what you will. But what I'm telling you is a story that I use that healed me. I am, this affected my life to the point where I'm willing to make this video, because I think maybe I can help one person, and if I can help one person, good, because then I can go through this crap for no reason, okay? Um, I'm a pro. Oh, uh, first, first of all, as you can see, I'm sitting down. So, uh, with an anal fissure, this is a triumphant feat. <laughs> uh, sitting sucks uh, when you have an anal fissure. Driving sucks when you have an anal fissure. Um, running, standing, lifting, squatting, all bad things, all horrible things. Driving's the worst. Um, there, there's, for whatever reason, the, the position that you sit in when you drive is just like the, the fucking absolute worst. Um, I ended up going to ER a couple times. I talked to six different doctors. I have, I have friends that are doctors. I have friends that are dermatologists. I asked everybody everything. And they all said the same thing. Eat water, eat fiber, avoid hard foods. Right, take baths. That's what they told me. So, um, there's another guy who has a video called Heal Anal Fissures Naturally. He has a video where it's like, the, t the top 12 things that do not work to heal an anal fissure. Definitely recommend watching it, it's on YouTube. He basically, he has a lineup of all of the over-the-counter and prescription things. And he says, this doesn't work, and this doesn't work, and this doesn't work, and he is 100% right. None of that shit works. None of that shit works. He's trying to sell um, essential oils for your butt. Um, and they work, they work, but they're, I don't think they work without this extra stuff that I'm gonna tell you, okay? Um, so basically, here's the problem. You got a tear on your sphincter and perhaps on your thigh or on your, I don't know what the medical word is for taint, but it could be there. Um, you also may have a tear internally. Um, you know, the colon is a tube, so anywhere along the tube, there could be problem area. It could be here, or it could be somewhere in here, or both. So, here's the issue. The sphincter muscle, uh, for majority of your life, is tight and closed. 
So it's not allowing blood flow. How your body heals soft tissue is blood has to take nutrients to the damaged area, okay? You get a cut, you bleed, it clots, okay? There's blood flow. You might notice redness around the, the cut and that could that's your body sending blood to that area for it to heal. Really kind of simple and there's a, probably a better explanation by somebody who's not, who actually knows what the hell they're talking about. Somewhere else, if you wanna hear about how cuts heal, Google that. Um, but I'm gonna talk to you about how I healed my anal fissure. Okay, we're six minutes, five minutes in. I'm gonna stop talking about that. This is what I did. Um, 36 to 48 hour fast. What that means is no food for 36 to 48 hours. Followed by four day liquid diet. Followed by experimentally eating. Okay? And then I would do it again. And then I would do it again. It took me three rounds of that. Three rounds, three hard weeks. And I, if that took me from in pain every day to being able to function with the occasional pain. So when I first had my anal fissure, when I took ibuprofen, it did not help. It didn't help at all. The only time I had relief is when I took prescription hard meds from the doctor, which how can you function on that? So I wanted to get to a point just so that I could function. That's all, that was my initial goal. Like, can we get my life back? This is, so what fasting does for you is two things. One, um, you're giving your digestive system a break, um, specifically your sphincter. Um, you do not want to have bowel movements for a little while so that it has a chance to heal. Okay, this is, this is part A of a A to maybe F thing you have to do okay so when you fast after 24 hours something freaking magical happens which is your body creates stem cells if you don't know what stem cells are google stem cells uh, the layman explanation is they are magical wild card cells that can turn into any cell and heal and replace that cell okay not only after 24 hours are you, is your body producing some stem cells, it's also doing autophagy, which basically means all of your, uh, all of your cells that are damaged will be eaten and used as, for materials by your healthy cells. So your cells are very sacrificial, man. They're like, hey man, I'm, I'm not feeling too good. Just take me out. And the healthy cells are like, sure thing, yum. Um, so if you think about your damaged area, okay, um, you're essentially promoting healing in that area as well as all areas in your body. There's plenty of damaged cells down there, okay? So you're gonna speed up the healing process on that side. You're gonna create stem cells, which are gonna go into your bloodstream. And at the end of your fast, you're gonna be pretty weak. Um, look up how a proper way to do fasting. Uh, you wanna load up on magnesium, calcium. I took slim, I drank slim fast shakes the day before. Um, I really loaded up on all these uh, electrolytes. And then I did a monk fast, which is a 36 hour fast. You can go to 48 hours. If you go to 48, you're gonna have a ton more uh, stem cells in your bloodstream. So, did the stem cell thing. Now, I still don't wanna poop. Pooping equals pain, but I have to stay alive. So, liquid diet. Uh, clear liquid diet, lots of juice, lots of vitamins, mix it up. Um, my day consisted of slim fast shakes, carnation instant breakfast shakes if I needed them, depending on the levels of vitamins I wanted to get, a multivitamin, lots of water. Um, I have a blender, so a, a trick that I use to give myself lots of water is I would fill the, the whole blender with ice, then put juice, different types of juice on the ice, and then I'd blend it. And when I finish that smoothie, I'm actually drinking not just the sugary juice, which has nutrients, but also lots of water from the ice. And um, I found that I could put a lot more uh, liquid down that way. So I um, did that and um, do that for four days. Yes, a 40 hour fast followed by a liquid diet. Um, 
and then try to go to the, try to eat normally. And by normally, I mean healthy. Don't do fast food or anything like that. Your body is healing, so give it good stuff. Give it lots of greens, lots of magnesium. Um, every meal should have a green vegetable. That's that's easy. If you're having breakfast, do spinach inside your eggs. If you're having lunch, do a salad with your lunch, or or some type of wrap in lettuce or some type of broccoli. Dinner is easy. Some type of green bean, some type of pea. Okay, you want fiber. You want fiber. You want magnesium. You want calcium. You want all these things your body needs. Um, what you're gonna notice is <clears throat> after the first round of this, you're still gonna be in pain when you go to the bathroom. I'm not gonna lie to you, but it's gonna be significantly reduced. Okay. Um, then you do this again. Then you do this again. For me, it took three times. I had a very, I had multiple tears, so it was not a good time. Um, after the third time, I, I was able to. I'm still in pain here and there. Um, I still, ha I still healing. Like I said, there's no blood flow because the sphincter is closed all the time. Um, but it, it worked for me. Now, here are some tips to reduce the pain while you're dealing with this. Uh, they say sits baths, right? A sits bath is basically a thing that sits inside your toilet. You put in your toilet, you pour some water in it, and you sit on it. I found that that was messy as hell, okay? I either didn't put enough water in it and I was sitting over the water, or I put too much water in it and I sat down and water just went everywhere, okay? Um, the benefit to those is that you're not in a bathtub. I mean, that's the only, that's the only benefit. I prefer the tub. Okay, I filled my tub halfway up with water. Um, I added bath salts. There is an amazing, and I want to give them a five star review, bath salt on Amazon that has coconut oil, eucalyptus, and a few other things, and, and, and like two other things <clears throat> infused on the salt. So you fill up your bathtub. You take this bath salt off Amazon. It's good. It's anal. It's called hemorrhoid bath salt. Hemorrhoid healing bath salt. All natural, whatever. Do two cups of that inside of your bath, inside your tub. You mix that up. You let it dissolve completely, and then you lay in the bathtub for thirty minutes. I use. I have a waterproof smartphone, so I just watched an episode of something for thirty minutes, um, and I did this three times a day. So it sucked, but that offered serious relief. I found that initially, I would get out of the tub and I'd be back in pain, but during the baths, I would reduce my pain a lot. The idea behind a, a salted bath is that those bath salts, it's actually magnesium. It's a lot of magnesium in there. And when that gets on your skin, your body reacts by pushing blood out to your skin. Um, and the thought process behind it is if you're in the bathtub, um, you're, the warm water is loosening that tight muscle a little bit, which is gonna bring you some relief. And the magnesium is going to promote blood flow. And then the eucalyptus and the coconut oil is going to uh, keep everything nice and lubricated and promote healing, okay? It also just relieves the pain. The other thing that I use um, three times a day was this uh, oil, essential oil called anal fissure oil. Yeah, if you search anal fissure relief, it's probably the first thing you're going to find. It is not. It is not one of these things that you put on yourself and you immediately feel relief. It does not work that way. It is. Oh, for me, I found it to be a way to keep that area lubricated and not dry. Because when it dry, when it gets dry, it hurts worse. Um, and so I always wanted to keep it kind of, I don't want it to be wet with water because that can cause chafing. I want it to be just a little bit with a little bit of this oil. Um, it helps healing. It, it also, again, more blood flow, especially if whenever you touch any part of your skin, your, your skin's going to, your body's going to react with blood flow. You can massage your scalp, for example, and bring blood flow. So you're going to put, don't be rough, be nice to yourself, put some oil down there three times a day. That's it. You use the bathroom, do some no alcohol baby wipes, chase it with some toilet paper padding, 
make sure you're dry, do three drops of this oil, apply it, move on with your life. That's it. Three times a day, I found that that really sped up my healing. Um, the baths helped with my pain tolerance. The fasting uh, helped with by helping my body heal naturally and also giving my digestive system a break. And then the liquid diet continued to give my body a break. Now, when you're done with all of this and you're back to um, you know, being able to eat normally, you're going to want to think about your gut health. Liquid diets and fasting is not good for your gut biome. You can do some research on that in your free time, perhaps when one of your frequent baths with your phone on YouTube. Um, you can look that up, but fasting and not not giving your body uh, solid foods can do some damage to your gut biome. So what I did was now that I'm back to normal, um, I'm doing I'm doing some green tea. I'm doing bone broth. Um, I do bone bone broth probably like once uh, every other day um, as a supplement with my with my dinner. Um, and that just has a whole bunch of good stuff for your gut health to kind of bring that back to normal because after this is all done, you're going to want to poop normally again and having all those bacteria in the perfect balance they need to exist in in freaking a Trolls movie harmony, um, you know, you need all that shit back in there. Otherwise, you're still going to have bad, bad bowel movements. So anyway, uh, again, I am not a doctor. I just watched a lot of YouTube videos. I healed myself without surgery. I healed myself without ointments because none of that shit was working. Anyway, um, I, lidocaine sucks. Hydrocortisone sucks. Um, you know, just none of that crap worked. Natural healing worked for me. So, um, good luck to you. I hope you found some of this helpful. Uh, and again, I am not a doctor. Do what you will. All right. Good luck. See you guys.